This video has been brought to you by the students at the University of California, Riverside. Specifically, this video will cover cortical rotation and dorsalization of the Xenopus embryo. First, a quick overview on how cortical rotation influences dorsalization in Xenopus. A symmetry breaking event occurs, which is the fertilization of Xenopus egg. Then, through the movements of that egg, a gray crescent is formed which then activates dorsalization factors. These dorsalization factors lead to the formation of the nucleus center and the spemen mangled organizer. This organizer then secretes even more dorsalization factors, which then causes the dorsalization of the embryo. You can see the dorsalization of the embryo through the formation of dorsal structures. One of the earliest structures that has indicated that dorsalization has been completed is the formation of the blastopore lip. Now we can ask the question, what is so important about cortical rotation? Cortical rotation establishes the dorsal ventral axis and changes the radial symmetry of the early embryo to bilateral symmetry. Where does cortical rotation occur? Cortical rotation occurs between the vegetal and animal poles opposite of the sperm entry point or the SEP. How does cortical rotation occur? Cortical rotation occurs through the movements of the developing embryo. This will be explained in detail later. What function do cortical rotation facilitate? Cortical rotation is needed for the dorsal ventral axis determination, as stated earlier, but specifically it relocates disheveled, which establishes a beta catenin gradient. So, what if cortical rotation is absent? If cortical rotation is absent, then we see a ventralized embryo, which is basically an embryo without dorsal features. Uutenesis happens before fertilization. Fertilization leads to cortical rotation. In frogs, the sperm penetrates the egg jelly and undergoes the acrosome reaction. The sperm and egg plasma membrane fuse to form the zygote. Then the cell cycle begins. A key event is the rearrangement of egg materials by cortical rotation, creating a gray crescent opposite the point of sperm entry and specifying the dorsal ventral axis. Before fertilization, the egg has a clear polarity. The animal half of the egg is pigmented. It contains the egg nucleus and will give rise to ectoderm. The vegetal half contains the egg yolk and gives rise to the endoderm. Which one, which T, wind, and beta catenin stabilizing agent can be found in the vegetal pole? The shovel mRNA is found throughout the egg, but the wind pathway protein disheveled is found at the vegetal pole prior to fertilization. It is a competitor for beta catenin stabilizing agents that specifies the dorsal ventral axis. Its localization changes during cortical rotation, going from vegetal to future dorsal. Cortical rotation begins by the sperm entry into the animal hemisphere of the Xenopus embryo, which will cause the cortex, shown in dark blue, to loosen from the inner cytoplasm, allowing the cortex to move freely. Upon sperm entry, the cortex will move 30 degrees away from the sperm entry point, causing the movement of microtubules. The microtubules will help move maternal dorsalizing factors, which we will see in the next slide. The area that was previously covered by the dark cortical cytoplasm in the animal hemisphere is now exposed and has a gray appearance. This is known as the gray crescent. The gray crescent is significant because it marks the region of gastrulation. We see in this figure that if the gray crescent is not present in the blastomere, the embryo will develop improperly into a belly piece. How does cortical rotation play a role in the dorsalization of the embryo? As mentioned, the sperm enters the animal pole of the Xenopus embryo. The vegetal pole contains maternal dorsalizing factors such as the protein disheveled and the mRNA that codes for Wnt, VG1, and VEGT. The cortical rotation will cause these maternal dorsalizing factors to move away from the sperm entry point. This will cause a greater concentration of disheveled and Wnt. Specifically, disheveled will stabilize beta-catenin by inhibiting GSK3-beta and the Wnt ligand will promote beta-catenin. 
The result is dorsal enrichment of beta-catenin. Beta-catenin will play a role in the transcription of dorsal-specific regulatory genes. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Wnt will bind to the transmember protein frizzled and activate disheveled. Disheveled will inhibit GSK3 beta, which is part of the destruction complex, and will stabilize beta catenin. Beta catenin will migrate into the nucleus, and TCF3 with beta catenin will remove gaucho and activate transcription of genes such as cymois. The cymois trans transcription factors will help define the nucleus center and is involved in the induction of the Speedman organizer. As a result of Wnt signaling, the embryo is now generating high concentrations of beta catenin on the future dorsal side of the embryo. While the vegetal pole is undergoing TGF beta signaling to generate veg T, both beta catenin and veg T can further activate nodal. While veg T generates it at a low concentration, it is not enough to generate the nucleus center, but instead future mesodermal ventral tissues. While beta catenin generates a high concentration of nodal on the future dorsal side, with work in tandem with the nodal from VEGT to induce a strong overlapping signal to define the nucleus center. The nucleus center will then induce the organizer, which initiates the movements for gastrulation. This will define the dorsal axis of the embryo. In determining the organizer, Fig A shows the new embryo spamen and mangled used to identify it. Grafting the dorsal lip of the blast support area above the nucleus center, known as the organizer, onto the future ventral side of an embryo resulted in the gastrulation and formation of structures normally found in the dorsalized region, which includes somites and neurotube, as seen in Fig B. In testing whether the axis were derived from the donor or the host, two different species of newts were used for their different pigmentation. We saw the transplanted tissue induced the dorsalization of the host embryo tissues. The results of lice specimens can be seen in Fig C and D, where we see the generation of a second axis become visible. This is similar to the normal development of embryos for dorsalization, and thus proving the existence of the organizer in the future dorsal side. The nucleus center induces the organizer in the region where the first invagination and involution occurs. The organizer is a trait of all chordates. Without an organizer, the embryo does not develop a body axis. While gastrulation is occurring, the organizer sends signals to three perspective germ layers, they are important for patterning the embryo. The organizer induces the three germ layers by blocking the activity of signaling pathways such as Wnt and TGF beta. So, in this image, the red dots represent um, antagonist proteins such as cordin, noggin, and other proteins like XNR3, which are secreted by the spumin organizer, and the blue dots represent BMP4. Noggin, which specifically binds to BMP2 or BMP4, acts like a dominant negative BMP receptor because it can compete with normal receptors for binding to BMP4 ligands. Thus, ectoderm um, cannot bind to BMP4 on the anterior dorsal side of the embryo, and it takes the default pathway to become central nervous system. Whereas on this side of the embryo, anterior ventral side of the embryo, spumin organizer is not present. Thus, it cannot secrete cordin or noggin or other antagonist proteins, and this allows for the ectoderm to bind to BMP4 and it becomes epidermis. So, how can it be that in, uh, in the early embryo, high wind and high TGF beta are used to induce the organizer, but the organizer inhibits these pathways? So, it all depends on the context. Induction of the organizer and the organizer inhibiting the pathways occur at different developmental times. This can be explained by how the same molecular pathways are co-opted during evolution to solve similar problems in different contexts. Nucleus center is often mistaken as the organizer, however that is not the case. The nucleus center is formed in the early blastula and induces the formation of the organizer on the dorsal side of the embryo. Twin embryos um, can only be induced through rotating the embryo 90 degrees twice. That is incorrect. There are other methods such as injecting the ventral side of the embryo with certain mRNAs or proteins. And this brings us to the third common misconception that injection of disheveled mRNA on the ventral side of the embryo will lead to dorsalization and formation of two axes. 
The shallow mRNA is actually present in every cell of the embryo. However, only the protein disheveled is present uh, is found on the dorsal side. Thus, injection of disheveled protein and other factors such as dominant negative GSK3 on the ventral side would incite the formation of second axes, whereas just injection of disheveled mRNA will not yield any, um, any difference. Few response study questions. These questions were answered throughout the PowerPoint. What factors are responsible for the formation of the new CUP center? How is the organizer made even though it releases antagonists for the proteins required to make it? And how disheveled stabilizes beta catenin in the wind pathway? This is our works cited page. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.